Hi everyone, it's Melanie at eventplanningblueprint.com. I want to welcome you back to another segment. My guest today is Liz King from Liz King Events. Liz, I want to welcome you to our show and thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. This is really exciting. It is exciting, yeah. And we're going to talk about um, technology and tech trends today. So um, Liz is the queen of that and she's extremely passionate about it. So before we get into um, how you incorporate technology into events and some of the trends that you're seeing, um, can you just share a bit of your background, like how you got started uh, planning events and how long you've been doing it? Sure. So I've been planning events for seven or eight years, and I started at Columbia University doing events for them. And after a couple of years, I decided I wanted to strike out on my own and have my own business. So three and a half years ago, I started Liz King Events, um, which actually started through Twitter. I had a Twitter account just to learn about setting up a business, and I started getting client inquiries through that. And so I went with it after a while of telling people, you know, oh, I'm not a business. Thank you. And I would refer them to someone else after a while. I just started taking them. (laughs) And so I balanced Columbia and my business for two and a half years. And then just about a year ago, I finally struck out on my own and have been doing Liz King events for the past year as well. Amazing. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, And so you're very passionate, as I mentioned, about technology. Um, We're going to have a link to your blog, which is all about technology and, and events and how that's incorporated. So can you just share some of your insights and some of the tech trends that you're seeing? Sure. I mean, I just believe so passionately that event technology really changes the way that we plan events. Some of the biggest struggles that we have, like managing multiple clients, all of the many logistics that we have our hands in to plan a single event, marketing, all of those things can be made so much better through technology. Mm-hmm. So I I just have always been kind of an early adopter, and um, I just realized that there's a very, very distinct tie between events and technology. And so I just learn about technology companies. I use the blog to share that with other event planners because I've, I've noticed that the events industry is really not that forward thinking when it comes to technology all the time. And so we have created an educational resource for them. Um, and it's just great to learn about different companies. I sit through demos all the time. I encourage planners to always do that. It feels like oh, I'm losing an hour of my life, but yeah. You can. The more demos you can watch, the more you understand how it all works, why one company is better than another. It's mm-hmm. it's very much worth the time. Um, and in terms of trends, I feel like 2013, I was seeing a lot of companies trying to do event management. So really an A to Z platform where an event planner could go in and manage all of their events. I'm not sure how successful it was, mostly because so many, every event is so different. Um, but it was, I think, a trend that you know more and more people wanted to create that technology platform. And now I think I'm seeing a lot of companies shifting towards ROI. They know that event planners need to prove to our sponsors and to our um, w- whatever it might be, clients, bosses, whatever it is, yeah. why the events are worth it. And so there's a lot of companies now trying to use technology to measure the social reach of our events and, yeah. and just the general reach. How are we really getting a return on our investment. Nice. And so are there a couple of, um, of those platforms that you prefer, or you would suggest that people have a look at? That's a good question. Um, there was a company called Dotcaster that did really cool um, analytics and they've shifted a little bit. They call themselves Constant Insight now, okay. um, but very similar concept to what they were doing. And then One Lobby is a company that was focused on event management last year, and I think they're having more of a focus on ROI moving forward. Interesting. That is a uh, that's a great focus to have because you're right. It is so important to to prove yourself, and you often have to prove yourself to the client because they're like, you know, this just actually came up in the last um, 24 hours where there was a question posted in an online private group I'm in about an event company, like look someone looking for an event company, and someone suggested, well. Why why don't you just go to the hotel and do it? You know, and I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> they're there for one purpose, but they're not going to manage your event for you. <laughs> so, right, so right. you're always having to prove that, you know what, hiring an event planner, here's the ROI behind that and why you want to do it. So I love that they're focusing or shifting their focus. That's great. Um, one of the things that uh, I should just mention that you, your blog was actually featured in one of our blog posts, the, one, of the, as one of the top 15 bloggers um, in event planning. Um, and one of the 
aside from the your focus on technology, one of the things that I really love about your site itself is that you outline the anatomy of your client. Um, and the reason I like that is because it, it's really, it's very focused. Like you know exactly who you're going after and it's kind of like if you're not these things, chances are probably not the right fit. Maybe, but probably not. Um, so can you just share with us like how you chose that type of um, anatomy and uh, how it's helping your business? Sure. I mean, you know, they say if you try to appeal to too many things, you're not going to really appeal to anything. And I think a lot of event planners do that. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, you know, I say, oh, what kind of events do you do? And they say, oh, a little special events. We do some corporate events. We do a couple weddings. You know, like, how do you market yourself if that's what you do? Exactly. So we just started thinking about what do we really do well and what are we passionate about and I love working with entrepreneurs I love helping them get their brands off the ground I get really involved probably a little too involved but <laughs> sometimes I get involved and I'm like am I a marketing person or, <laughs> person or whatever I but um I notice that I like to do that. And so I also notice, though, that within entrepreneurs, it's not just anyone who has a business. They have to have an audience that's established so that we can have people come to an event, for example. Right. Yeah. So we really just started to nail down on what is the ideal relationship. We're going to really provide an amazing service for them. We're going to give them something that's really valuable. And they have enough set up that they need this service. So we laid that out on our website. It's been amazing how targeted our our referrals and our leads are now. They're just, yeah. I mean, of course, everything comes through word of mouth, but I think anyone who finds us on the site can easily kind of rule themselves in or out. Mm -hmm. And it's really valuable for us to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, this comes up a lot because I'm helping other people get their event planning business started, whether that's part-time or full-time. And I actually just had a conversation yesterday with um, someone in my event planning community on Facebook about this, and she's trying to decide, should I do corporate, should I do weddings? And I was like, those are so different. How are you going to market yourself? That was the first thing I, was, I yeah. asked her. She, you know, I'm like, just focus. So I really love that you've done that. And I keep telling people that over and over and over again. So I'm going to point it out one more time. <laughs> Check out Liz's, Liz's site. See how she's done it because it's, right. it's perfect. And, and you, like you said earlier, too, it's such a great way to, well, it's easier to market yourself. But it's also easier for other people to market you. Absolutely. Which they know exactly is, where to refer you for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's great. And so if you were um, going to start again today, start all over, is there anything that you would do differently? There's so much I would do differently. Um, I think the biggest thing is I really wasn't sure about you know, what to charge and, and how to get myself out there. And I started way too slow. I mean, the fact that it took three and a half years to really, or two and a half years to get out on my own, I, I realize now it could have been much earlier. When I was in it, I was just thinking, well, this is how it works. You build business and it's really slow, you know, yeah. but it's because I wasn't pushing hard enough and I wasn't charging what I should be charging. And it, the day I took it seriously and decided, no, this is what we need to charge. And, and I gave that to the client. I remember the first time doing that and feeling like, oh no, they're <laughs> and they said, yeah, I'm going to say no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not going to get hired. Exactly. And then I realized that, you know, you have to know who you are, just like we know our target audience. We have to know what value we provide and what's that, what that's worth. And you can grow your business much faster by working with the right clients at the right dollar amount. I was doing so much for free. And, and I think that's fine to build your brand and to get out there and obviously to build experience. But I would have pushed so much harder if I just believed a little bit more in what we were doing. Right. Nice. Um, well, free is not going to sustain a business. It's not. <laughs> I'm all for volunteering, but. <laughs> and free brings you all kinds of clients that are maybe not at all what you should be working with. And right. so to hone in on what you actually want is Great so much point. harder because you're working on events that are nothing like what might be good for your brand. Yeah, that, you know, it's very true. And so you brought up charging. This comes up a lot on my um, Facebook page and I get emailed this question a lot and I've done some videos about how to charge for your events. How did you determine how to do that? Or what your value was in terms of dollar value? I, I kind of figured it out based 
the same way everyone else does, you know, we don't really know what everyone else charges, which I think is a hard part. You yeah. don't know what your competition is submitting. Um, so I have a really great mentor. She's worked on Olympics and all these great events. And so she told me, really, just think about yourself and what you need to sustain the business, what you need personally to live, and, and break that down into an hourly rate. And then what I do is I quote for clients a project fee based on an estimated number of hours. So if it's more or less hours, they don't get charged more or less. Mm -hmm. But it's based on something specific. And I really like doing that versus a flat fee or a percentage of the budget because if they say, you know, that's out of my budget, I can say, okay, well, here were the services associated with that. Let's drop a couple things. It drops the hours. It's easy for me to adjust up or down. Um, and I think it's very transparent with our clients so we just tell them this is what it's going to take and and I track the hours if they want us to track them I don't have to track it's up to them um, and so we kind of I guess figured it out through you know learning from what other people do the best that we could mm -hmm. needing to know obviously what we need to do to cover our expenses and then thirdly just finding something that was transparent and we felt worked for our clients that's really great. Yeah, I love that you're you're brought up the transparency, um, which I think is really important because cl clients don't want to be blindsided with anything. So just <laughs> let them know what's going on. Keep them in the loop. You know, and Make even if it's shocking when they first see the number, whatever that might be, it gives them. You can always say, you know, these are the associated services, and yes. it it makes the conversation much better. If your number is shocking and it's just a flat fee, there's nothing they can really do about that. Right. right. There's no room for negotiation. Yep. Yep. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, so Liz, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Again, we're going to have your um, website at the bottom of this, um, this video and on my blog post. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in again. Um, I encourage you to share this video um, on your social media outlets. And I'd like to encourage you to sign up for our weekly blog posts at eventplanningblueprint.com. Thanks for joining us.